so to finish the unit, we are going to look at some application problems or word problems. So it's good to have some highlighters available, colored pens, colored pencils, uh, just so that we can highlight key pieces of information in each word problem. And you want to go nice and slow. So I'm reading this question. It says, at our particular restaurant, each slider has 225 calories and each chicken wing has 70 calories. A combination meal with sliders and chicken wings has a total of seven sliders and chicken wings all together. So that's a key piece of information. So a combination meal is going to have seven sliders and chicken wings. So that's going to be one of our equations that we use. Okay. And the combination meal contains 1,110 calories. So that's another piece of information, which is going to be one of our equations. Write a system of equations, so that means we're going to write more than one that could be used to determine the number of sliders in the meal. So I want to know how many sliders in the meal and how many chicken wings in the meal. So that's our pink equation. Uh, define the variables used to write the system. So we first start by defining variables. These are our let statements. Okay, so let's, um, we have sliders and chicken wings. Let S equal the number of sliders. And let's let C equal the number of chicken wings. Okay, so a total, we have a total of seven sliders and chicken wings all together. So the number of sliders, S, plus the number of chicken wings, C, equals seven. Okay, now for our calories, we know that, so back up here, we could use the yellow again, that each slider has this many calories. Okay, and then each chicken wing has 70 calories. So we have 225 calories per slider, so that's multiplication, plus 70 calories per chicken wing is a total of 1,110. So there are our two equations that we just had to write, we didn't have to solve. Um, for our first word problem. I'm trying to, I'm going to keep the pace moving because I don't want this video to get too long, which it can with word problems. All right, the second one. So Isaiah and Cooper work at a dry cleaner's uh, ironing shirts. Isaiah can iron 25 shirts per hour and Cooper can iron 30 shirts per hour. Cooper worked twice as many hours as Isaiah, so that's important. And together, they ironed 340 shirts between them. So here's our two equations, and it gives you the rate or speed at which they can iron. So where does that come into play? Does that have to do with the hours they worked or the number of shirts? Number of shirts. So let's go back and highlight this in yellow. Isaiah can do 25 shirts per hour and Cooper 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let, for defining my variables, because we just have to write a system that can be used to solve for the number of hours Isaiah worked. So I didn't speak too much about this last one, but Whatever it's telling us to do, so for instance, the number of hours I'm trying to find Isaiah worked and the number of hours that Cooper worked, those are what we're trying to figure out, okay? Those are our variables or let statements. So let's let x equal the number of hours Isaiah worked and let y equal the number of hours Cooper worked. I could have used I and C, but I don't like to use I. Just like I don't like to use B's and S's because they look like sixes and fives. So let's start with the pink. 
Cooper worked twice as many hours as Isaiah. So Cooper is Y. So the number of he hours worked. How did I get that? Well, I just took whatever um, numbers Isaiah worked, and it's twice. So that would be 2x. Um, the second part, we're talking about how together they iron 340 shirts between them. Well, between them, so Isaiah, let's look at his rate. 25 shirts per hour. So take the number of hours he worked, multiply that by 25 shirts. And the number of hours Cooper worked, he did 30 shirts per hour. So 30y equals 340. Okay? So there's our equation for that one. Let's look at our next problem. So with this one, we're not only going to write the equations, but we're also going to solve it. So I'm going to set up a guide and do my LUT statements, and I'll grab the highlighters. Here it says Ava's raising money for a school trip by selling bags of chips and candy bars. The price of each bag of chip is $1.75, and the price of each candy bar is $1.00. Yesterday, Ava made $26 total. So she made $26. So that's going to be one of our equations. And we know the total number of chips that she sold in candy bars is 17. So that's going to be another equation. And then we'll have to pick our method in order to solve. So I'm going to let, I, even though I hate using it, um, she's selling chips and candy bars. That's going to go with the amount of money she made. So I am going to use um, C for the number of bags of chips. And I am going to use, I use a capital B, the number of candy bars. So she made $26. How did she get that? Well, she sold chips and candy bars. Chips are $1.75. So $1.75 per bag of chip. And each candy bar is a dollar. So C equals the bag of chips, and B is the number of candy bars. So 175 per chip and one dollar per bar, and we get 26. And then we know we have 17 bags of chips and candy bars. So chips and candy bars is 17. So if I'm looking at this and I want to solve uh, the method, I would actually use probably would be substitution. So I'm going to solve this for uh, B. So subtract C and we get B equals 17 minus C. So then I would go to the equation here and plug in that for B. So 1.75C plus 1 times 17 minus C equals 26. Anything times 1 is 1, so 175C plus 17 minus C equals 26. So now if I'm solving, I want to subtract the 17, and we get, um, well, if we take 1.75C minus 1C, that 0.75C equals 26 minus 17 is 9. Take 9 divided by 0.75, and we get 12. So we have 12 bags of chips. Now I want to find the number of chips and the number of candy bars. So I have to go back to this um, equation. So I'm going to use the yellow one because it's an easy C plus B equals 17. And if I know C is 12, 12 plus what gives us 17? 5. So we have 5 candy bars. You don't have to answer word problems um, in terms of a sentence, but you should, whoops, you should always include your units. 
Okay. All right, let's look at the next problem. So the next problem, we're also gonna have to do some graphing. So here, Eli and Claire, they work at a dry cleaners ironing shirts. Eli can iron 15 shirts per hour and Claire can iron 20 shirts per hour. Combined, they have a total of 17 hours. So there's going to be one of our equations that I'll write off to the side. And they ironed 300 shirts. So that's going to be the second equation. Which goes along with Eli, 15 shirts per hour, and Claire, 20. It does tell us what to use for our variables. It defines them, so we don't have to write our lead statements. It says um, the number of hours Eli worked is X. We can, though, we can label our axes. So number of hours Eli worked, even though I don't have to do this on Delta Math. And this is the number of hours Claire worked. So if I'm writing the equation, they worked a total of 17 hours. So that's just going to be in pink, x plus y is 17. Now the number of shirts per hour, well how'd they get the total 300? Well Eli, who's x, is 15. So 15 shirts per hour plus Claire, 20. We get 300. Now if we're solving by graphing, we need to rewrite each of these in terms of y equals. So we have to solve both of them for y. So I'm just going to highlight the area and in color for each equation that we're solving. So if we have x plus y equals 17, we just want to subtract x. We get y equals 17 minus x or negative x plus 17 for the y equals form. And then 15x plus 20y equals 300. So we want to subtract 15x first. So we have 20y equals negative 15x plus 300. And then divide by 20. So we get y equals. We'll divide this both by 5. We get negative 3 fourths. And then x plus 30 over, or 300 over 20 is 15. So now we graph the two lines. So this one's going to start at 17. And it's going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So let's grab the straight edge and draw the line. And very precise. I'm actually, it's very light, but I'm going to keep doing the down one over one because it is so light. And I like to know the number that it does cross at the bottom. So 17. Okay, we don't need to extend past because we can't have the negative number of hours Eli worked. And we don't need to go past here because we don't have the negative hours of Claire worked. And then starting at 15, let's uh, first... I like this in pink. Okay, starting at 15, we're going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, so right at the 20. Okay. And the question says, um, we want to know the number of hours they each work. So that's right here where they cross. And that point is 8, 9. So 8, the x is Eli. So Eli worked 8 hours. And Claire worked nine hours. Okay. 
Just a couple more. Two more, I think. All right, so this one. So Charlotte is working two summer jobs, making $7 per hour babysitting and $9 for walking dogs. In a given week, she can work a maximum. So because of the word maximum, we're going to have an inequality. She can only work at most or a maximum of 11 hours, and she has to earn at least $85. And how is she earning the money? Seven hours babysitting or $7 per hour babysitting in nine dollars per hour walking dogs so I'm gonna so if Charlotte worked eight hours walking dogs determine so we know a piece of information determine the minimum number of whole hours babysitting she must work in order to meet her requirements if there are no possible solutions submit an empty answer so I'm gonna let B equal the number of hours babysitting And I'm going to let D equal the number of hours walking the dogs. So a maximum of 11 total hours. So she can work 11 hours or less. So I know that the number of hours babysitting plus the number of hours walking the dog is less than or equal to 11. Now that other piece, she needs to earn $85 at least. So that means she can earn $85 or more, okay? We know she makes $7 per hour babysitting and then $9 per hour um, walking the dogs and she walked the dogs eight hours. So $7 for babysitting and then $9 for the hours walking the dogs, but we can plug that in as eight. And she needs to earn at least 85. So she needs to earn more than 85 or 85. So because there's only one variable here, I can actually solve. So we solve this one. So 7B plus 72 is greater than or equal to 85. Subtract the 72. We get 7B is greater than or equal to 13. Divide by 7. And we get B is greater than or equal to 1.86. So if we're talking whole number of hours, the next number greater than 1.86 um, would be a B value of 2. So greater than or equal to, or B would equal 2. And the pink inequality, B plus D is less than or equal to 11. Um, she can work a maximum of 11 hours. Well, if she's already working eight hours walking the dogs, I'm gonna plug in the eight, and I could have actually done that over there. We get a B value less than or equal to three once we subtract the eight. So a whole number less than three would be two, but it says it can be equal to three. So B equals three here, okay? Um, it says here, to determine the minimum number of whole hours babysitting. So the minimum or the smaller one is the two. So she must work two hours. And then the last one we're gonna do is an inequality, but we are going to graph it as well to finish. So here Grayson and his children went into a movie theater where they sell bags of popcorn for $7.50 each and candies for $5 each. Grayson has $70 to spend and must buy a minimum. So he only has $70 and must spend a minimum of 10 bags of popcorn and candies all together. If X represents the number of bags of popcorn, purchased and Y is the number of candies. So they tell us what our variables are. So X is the number of bags of popcorn. And this is the number of candies. Okay. 
write and solve a system of inequalities. So our inequalities, again, are going to go back to he has $70 to spend, and he must spend or at least buy a minimum of 10 bags. So he can buy 10 bags or more. So in pink, okay, the first inequality, and this will be the second. All right, so we'll look at the symbol momentarily. So pink, again, he must spend a minimum of 10 bags of candies altogether. So, and popcorn. So his popcorn plus candies is a minimum of $10. So that would look like X plus Y is greater than or equal to 10. So here I shouldn't have put the X plus Y because it needs to be in the form right here. Y equals or Y is greater than or less than. So we would subtract it's actually y greater than or equal to negative x plus 10. So this should be negative x plus 10. Got to do this first and then there. I was ahead of the game. And then last, he has $70. Well, he's going to spend $7.50 each on a bag of popcorn. So $7.50x plus $5 each for a candy. And he only has $70, so he can spend less than 70 or 70 exactly. Okay, so now I'll solve this for y. So subtract 750x. We have 5y less than or equal to negative 750x plus 70. Divide by 5. 750 divided by 5. y is less than or equal to negative 150, and then 70 divided by 5 is 14. Okay. So this, though, I don't like to see as a decimal. Let me rearrange that. Because, right, I don't know. I can't go down 1.5. So let's go to the calculator and type in 750 over 1.5. I'm sorry, 750 divided by 5. And see if it'll give us the reduced fraction. Nope, so math, enter, enter. We have to change it to a fraction. So y is less than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 14. Okay, so there's that one. Negative 3 halves x plus plus 14. So let's start with the pink. Start up at 10 and we're going to go down one over one, down one over one, down one over one. Now think about if it should be a solid or dotted line. Because the equal to them both, they're both going to be solid and then we have to determine where to shade. So solid line and I'm graphing this one. So if I plug in 0, 0 right here is 0 greater than or equal to a negative 0 plus 10. Now this is going to say 0 greater than or equal to 10, which is false. So for this pink line, I don't want to shade where 0, 0 is. I'm going to shade this way. Then the next line starts at 14, and we go down 3 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, and it goes too far. Again, solid line. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Okay. And where do we shade? Here. So if I'm plugging in 0, 0, is 0 less than or equal to negative 3 halves times 0 plus 14? Well, this becomes 0 plus 14, which is 14, and 0 is less than or equal to, so this is true. So this is going to shade, and I'm going to shade straight down. So our solution set is here. 
So over here, the pink is y greater than or equal to negative x plus 10. And last, this is y less than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 14. And you can determine just one possible solution. So you get to pick any point in this area. So you could come out, um, let's say, 4, right? So follow the 4 up. The point 4, 7 is a possible answer. So 4 bags of popcorn, because 4 is the X. So 4 bags of popcorn. And the Y is the number of candies and seven candies. Okay? And I believe that is all I wanted to cover for today. And yes, that is it. So we finished the unit with word problems, probably the hardest part of the unit. So make sure you seek help if you need it. And I will post these notes, as I said, online. Have a good day and good luck on your test. Bye-bye.